Hey everyone, thanks for stopping out at Peace Garage. Well, let's get the front end of this tightened up. We'll get the water pump on, we'll get the ignition stuff in, serpentine belt system, we'll get that all tied up, and then we're gonna get this baby fired up. I have a little tip for you. Before you put the whole thing together, before you put your sealant on the gaskets and bolt it together for good, it's a good idea to mock it all up to find out where all the brackets go and where the bolts go for all your hold downs. And for my serpentine belt, I need this pulley. Uh, holder and this, this this custom bracket, those bolts go through the water pump housing here. So if you mock it up and put it together, when you assemble it, you don't have to take any of the bolts out. So it makes it pretty easy and pretty reliable to bolt it up once, then take it apart and make sure all your brackets and then the uh, my little turnbuckle here for the alternator is in the right spot. Water housing's all torqued down. I'll put my water pump on. And remember when you put your water pump on, the weep hole goes towards the bottom. You don't put the weep hole on the bottom. Stuff to tell when it starts leaking. I just have a light coating of high tack all the way around to make sure that it seals. And again, you don't need a ton on there. We're not gluing this together. We're just trying to provide a seal between two mating surfaces. I put my serpentine pulley on and the water pump. Pretty simple. Not too difficult here. Now since I'm going to be running this engine on a dyno, I don't put a thermostat in here. I'm just going to have the gasket on here to create a seal. And I'm going to have to take this apart after I have dyno tested it and put a thermostat in there and then I'll seal it. And the reason you do not put a thermostat in before you dyno test is because you only use a small amount of water during the dyno test. You want it to get to temperature really fast and the last thing you need is a thermostat waiting for that to heat up and circulate in the water. You want all the water to get really hot really fast so the engine reaches temperature and you can dyno test without sitting there waiting. Now since it's easy to get to right now, I'll put the two water nipples in for my heater hoses little Teflon tape on there just to seal the threads. I have this really awesome polished alternator I'm going to use here. And uh, the, the key here is to be be careful so you don't nick it up. This is a um, pretty expensive alternator. So there's a spacer that has to go in here. And it takes a little patience. Just be gentle. You don't want to drop it obviously and let it hit the water pump and nick both of them. And this bolt just goes right into the head. The bracket's already in place so it makes it nice and easy. Now before I tighten down my alternator belt, I'm sorry, alternator bolt, <laughs> put the serpentine belt on and I'll come in here with this bolt underneath the alternator and uh, for the tensioner. Start to put tension on the alternator. Takes a little bit of alignment. Of course, I'm doing this on the wrong side, which makes it difficult. It's not easy to build an engine and film it at the same time, I'll tell you that right now. They're trying to hit the camera, they're trying not to get in the way. And then trying not to make any mistakes on top of all of it. There you go. Okay. Pretty good tension already. Won't need that much tension added. I can crank down my alternator, crank down my bolts, and put some tension on that baby. You don't want to put too much tension on this. About a half an inch of deflection in the middle there is about all you need. Then you can tighten down your bolts. And one of them is left handed, so you have to go the opposite direction to do that. Alright, now I'm going to put the distributor in. And I still have piston number one at top dead center. And I'm going to slide the distributor in here and I'm going to engage it in the, got to engage it in the bottom of that half shaft. And my number one is pointing out here. So number one piston is out here, number one plug. So let's make sure we have that 
There we go. Line up just right. Just like that. I have my vacuum advance here ready. I can hook, the, hook up the hose there. Pretty simple. And to put it all together, I have a real nice chrome clamp here for the distributor. Makes it look real nice. Now, I'll just do the hand tight because we're going to have to adjust the timing once we get to the dyno test. Now I can start to hook up my fuel system here. And I have a solid dual feed fuel line here that um, I have a hose on the front that's going to go down to the fuel pump to a filter first. And these are pretty simple to hook up. Just have to line them up with the holes in the, in the uh, bowls from the carb and just tighten them down. You don't want to over tighten them because the the uh, bolt and the float here, this this nut can turn. So put a wrench on there when you're tightening these down. That way you won't turn this and crush that nylon washer that's in there. All right, in this uh, fuel line here goes down to the fuel pump down here to this vent line right here, and I have enough room for that line, but I have to get this fuel filter in there. So I'm going to uh, cut this line put the fuel filter in line with this fuel pump. I want a fuel filter between the fuel pump and the carburetors to make sure the fuel gets filtered. So I can probably put it right about there. So I'll cut the line and put that in we'll see how it works out. That's how the filter goes in. Just make sure when you put a filter in you have the arrow pointing in the direction of the flow. That's important. Arrow goes in direction of the flow. We're good. Now uh, we got to get our electrical started here with our distributor, our wires, and our spark plugs. Just one quick change. I had the fuel filter up here, but I'm concerned with it interfering with this coolant line that would come back from the heater. So I took the fuel, pump, uh, fuel filter and I mounted it down here, down below by the, uh, the fuel pump itself. I think it works out better down there. It's out of the way. Yeah, it's a little bit more pain in the butt for serviceability, but it's out of the way and it gives me a, a little more room here to try and get in for my uh, nipple for the heater hose. Well, first things first with the ignition here. First, the uh, distributor has a protronics unit inside, uh, which means I have to, I have the coil for the protronics unit. I have to mount this in here somehow. So what I'm going to have to do is make some sort of bracket, since I can't really mount it like here. I'll make some sort of bracket. Let me see what kind of bracket I can come up with. Mount it someplace in here or something like this. That should be simple. All right, so this is what I made up. I got this bracket here with threaded holes in the bottom. Just welded this angle up to match the shape of the manifold. And it should fit. It should fit right in here. Nice and easy. Right like that. Alright, perfect. Now all I do is powder coat this the same color as the manifold, I think. It'll look better than, well, maybe it look better black. I'll powder coat it black and we'll see what it looks like. Well there you go. Just like TV. Two hours worth of work in five minutes. And I put got some nice 12 point bolts so it matches the intake manifold. Really nice. Okay. Coils mounted. Move on to our, our spark plug wires. Alright, with the coil mounted, now I can begin the slow process of doing the wiring. Hook up my ground wire, getting my wiring harness to the distributor all set up. And of course, routing and cutting all of my coil wires, which takes a bit of time. You have to route them to get them neat, and I have to run them to each wire loom on each side. Um, so I'll show you when I get that done. And for those of you who, who have never cut a distributor wire or a, a wire like this and had to make your own wires, I'll show you how to make one. You can start by putting the connector on the distributor or the plug, whichever one you're starting on. I prefer to start with the plug on and then go to the distributor. And in this case, I'm doing the coil wire, so I'm going to make sure I leave plenty of slack in my coil wire. And then I'm going to come over here, and I'm, I'm going to cut this even with the end, like this. I'm going to cut that even, just like that. Now, you have to strip this back, and it has to be even with the end of this connector right here. So you're going to strip off roughly about that much. So I'm going to use my strippers. And I'm going to use the biggest, uh, biggest uh, cutter part of the, of the cutters here, the strippers. I'm just going to go like that. You don't want to cut the core, is what you're trying not to do, that core there. Okay? 
Now is a good time to slide the boot on and a little WD-40 inside the boot helps get the wire in there. As you go along, hit the camera there, your wire will start to come out. It just takes a little time and patience here. You don't need a whole mile of wire sticking out here, so just wipe it off. And you can take your connector off the distributor. And what you're going to do is you're going to fold this wire, fold that wire underneath like that, and hold that there. And you're going to put this, see the direction you're going to be putting this on, you're going to fold the wire on the bottom. So fold the wire, the core, it's got to be underneath the connector, put it on there like that. Now if you don't have the special pliers for crimping, you can do it with a pair of cutters. It just takes a little practice pushing it together. And you want to make sure that core stays underneath the wire when you're doing it. Like that. See how the core is underneath and it's touching? Now I can crimp this down. There is a special tool for doing this if you want to buy it. It makes the job a little easier, but if you don't want to put the money in, I'm showing you how to do it without special tools. Okay, now I have the end on there. I'm going to rotate my plug end so it's facing the right way. Like I said, it takes a little time and patience. And now, there's a little WD-40 in there to help pull the wire back. It's going slow because I don't want to pull that, I don't want to pull this off of the connector. So I'm pulling on the wire and pushing this back in at the same time. And as I pull back, I have my connector at the bottom there, and wire done. And when you're all finished, make sure you have your wires neatly up out of the way. You don't want to hit any other wires, the fan belt, you want to stay away from all that stuff, and route them neatly with your little clips. I have them routed on the side here with the nice aluminum uh, wire looms. These are real nice. And also, when you put these on, you have to put your headers on because the length of the wire of your uh, wire for your sparkler wire it might be a little longer than you thought because you have to go around the header. So when I put the headers on, I figured out that I had to go a little bit longer on a couple of them. So just make sure you have it all right. Um, I also have the coil finished, wired up to the distributor. All I need is to put some power to the coil and it's ready to fire up. I have my PCV in the back, going to the back of the carburetor and my breather hose hooked up. That's the only ventilation that's on this. There's nothing on the air cleaner. So that's pretty much it for, for the wiring. Alright, that's it for the assembly. The engine's all assembled. Now all we have to do is dyno test it to see what it puts out. So, this is what we're going to do. Oh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel and like my Facebook page. You can stay up with pictures as I move along with the project. I post pictures. You can keep up with that. Now, for this engine, uh, dyno test it. I want you to take a guess. Leave a comment below and what your guess is for the horsepower. Only one guess per person is pretty easy to sort. And the closest person, if somebody hits it right on, but the closest person will get a very limited edition Peace Garage sweatshirt, long sleeve black sweatshirt. And uh, they're very warm, they're very nice. So leave your guess below. First person to get the right answer or the closest answer gets a free sweatshirt. Thanks for stopping by Peace Garage.